Hi, dear all. I'm Pedro. Nice to have you on my channel. Today, I present you a short introduction into video edition and creation using VSDC. So, let's get into it without further delay. VSDC has become one of the most popular video editor softwares nowadays. Its free version already shows features you would only expect from expensive commercial packages. But if you need more, you can upgrade at any time to VSDC Pro for a moderate price. So now let's go inside this tool, talking first about the user interface. The first thing you see at startup is the startup window. On the first row, at the top, there are several buttons allowing you to select the type of project or toolset you need. Their functionalities are quite obvious from the names but I'll concentrate on the absolute most important, namely the blank project. When you depress this button, a dialog opens for you to select the basic properties of your future project, like project name, author, publisher, etc. But also some technical properties like the type of device, the resolution, the frame rate, or the frequency of the audio. Normally you would select the standard settings, that is, full HD, 30 FPS frames per second, and 44,100 Hz. After pressing Finish, you are led to the main window or workspace, which is made up of several sub-windows. By the way, if for some reason you are missing some sub-windows, you can get them back by going into the View menu, and as you see there, you can activate or deactivate, in this case, for example, the timeline window, or activating it again. At the bottom, there is a timeline where you insert your objects like videos or images in terms of time, start time, or duration. The units here are either seconds or frames. Standard, it's seconds. But you can change it to frames, for example, by depressing the clock button or depressing it again in seconds. Each project is composed of independent parts called scenes and each scene is made up of several elements, which I'll call objects, and which can be any of the ones you see on the object vertical bar. For example, videos, sounds, images, or text, or some geometrical forms like lines, ellipses, or even a free shape. When you introduce an object into your project, it is added to the timeline, so let's add a video. On the open dialog, you determine how and where to put your object. For now, we choose the defaults, that is, from cursor position, and say OK. Now you see on the timeline that objects are shown as horizontal bars contained in rows called layers. To improve visibility and see more related infos, you can increase the height of rows by dragging the mouse on the horizontal edges or you can increase or decrease the timely resolution continuously by using the time scale slider or the plus or minus buttons. The preview window in the center, which I call the scenery, always shows the content of the scene at the instant where the time cursor actually is. You can move this cursor manually dragging it with the mouse along the timeline to find a point or instant where you actually want to work. Otherwise, you can start a playback preview on the scenery by clicking on the red play button. Or stopping it by pressing it again. Or you can start a full preview of the actual state of your project by clicking on the green eye. So now let's import another video, starting at the cursor position, for example, and inserting a new layer. Okay, rows or layers have a hierarchy. Upper layers cover lower ones on the overlapping regions. As you see here, starting from the point where the cursor is, you only see the elephant video. but the audio tracks get completely mixed. You can change this order by using the arrows. 
and you can also completely disable or hide a layer by clicking the green toggle eye button at the very left of each layer. As you see, the elephant layer is now disabled and you only see the squirrel video. By clicking it again, you enable the layer again. By the way, I call this whole area at the left of the timeline layer control zone. We will come back to it later. You can timely modify an object easily by selecting it, clicking on it, and taking the selection with the mouse and moving it horizontally, so changing its start. For example, now both videos start at the same time. Or moving it vertically to place it to another layer. Let's go back. By the way, a layer can have several objects, one after the other, but then they cannot overlap, like here for example. You can change the duration of an object by dragging their vertical edges such that, shorting it, you will simply cut this part. Or extending it only adds the last frame along the extension, such that this will show as freezed without audio. Let's take a look. You see, starting at this point, where I extended it, it shows the elephant, but freezed without audio. To cut, copy and paste a selected clip, you can right-click on it and use copy, paste or whatever you need. For example, copy and then paste. We doubled the upper video. But important, you can always revert any change by clicking the undo, redo buttons. You can also change the basic visual appearance of an object directly on the scenery. By clicking it here, you will see a contour showing up around it, enabling you to reposition the object on the scene by dragging it or change its size and aspect ratio by dragging it from the corners or rotate it by dragging it using the rounded double arrow cursor icon appearing when you position the mouse a little bit outside the corners. On the Edit tab you find several auto scaling and alignment functions. Let's see. Let's make first the elephant video smaller. Align left, align right, align top, align bottom, horizontally, align central, and vertical, align central. Same width as the parent has, same height as the parent has, same size, same size and position. Very important is, when objects overlap, you might have difficulties to select the desired one. In that case, you can use the lock button on the layer control to disable a layer from being selected, thus enabling you to edit others without interference. So let's suppose the following situation. We have a rectangle just between the two video layers. Even after selecting that rectangle on the timeline, if we try to move it on the scenery, we end up moving the upper layer in fact. So how to solve the situation? We lock the upper layer, which makes it unselectable. And now we select our rectangle and we can in fact move it without interference. On the right side, you see the Properties sub-window, where you can set all the different properties and accomplish special actions for the selected object. Here I have selected the elephant video, so we have here all the properties for this video. For example, play backwards, we can choose yes or no. The speed, we can run it at lower or, or higher speed. The audio volume can also be set here if you want to silence completely the audio, then you would put it to minus 100 dB. Or you can even split video and audio tracks. Further to the right, you see the basic effects window. Here you can apply different types of chromatic adjustments. All the other advanced edit functionalities are accessed through the editor tab. Important to say is that any edition always acts upon the actual selected object. Let's see some examples. Cutting and splitting, for example, trim the start, split into two parts where the cursor position is, or use the simple crop tool. 
using add object, you can add several other objects besides videos and images to the timeline and it acts analog to using the object's vertical selection bar. As you select an object, for example a rectangle, a dialog is opened to enable you to choose the way to add the object to the timeline, typically from the cursor position and adding a new layer. But you can also select something like during the whole parent duration. Important is the new object will be placed on the actual level on a new or existing layer. But if you are within a given object by double clicking on it, then we say you are in the object. And if you add another object at this level, it will be within the level of the parent, which is in this case the elephant video. This one is called the parent object and in this case the rectangle called the child object. Child objects become inherent part of their parent one and for example when the parent is moved the child goes with it. You can add fantastic effects to videos and audio tracks by going to video or audio effects which are placed as effect object inside the selected parent. For example, transforms perspective from the cursor position. This marker here means the end of the parent object. We will use it only at the beginning, a couple of seconds. And let's say we want it first at the beginning to be 90 degrees, that is, it does not appear to be there, and ends up in zero degrees. So now let's take a look at the result. Among the effects, you also have visual and audio transitions, which are typically added at the beginning or end of objects to produce nice transitions between them. Take a look at this example. We want to do a transition at the end of the elephant video, so we put the cursor approximately there. We have to have the video selected and go to Video Effects, Transitions and Paper Burn. From the cursor position, we extend it manually to the end of the parent. So let's take a look at the result. Nice, isn't it? Once you decide your project is ready, go to the Export tab. On its center, you'll see the actual settings for video and audio output, and at the bottom sub window, you get an even more detailed list of properties and comparison between input and output. On the upper ribbon, you can select standard sets of properties for some very popular devices like PCs, web, iPhone, Android, etc., and platforms like YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook. In this example, we will use web and for YouTube. Using the change name, you can establish where your output file will go and its name. And with edit profile, you can change any desired output property at will. To start exporting, click on export. You will see now the progress bars at the top, showing you the advancement degree of your rendering process until it finishes. In the output folder you defined, or on the default one, as determined by general options, you will find your new video and you can play it using your preferred video player. Or you can upload it to any wished platforms. Please bear in mind that this was just a kind of appetizer to this topic. If you want to know absolutely everything about video creation with VSDC, then you are at the right channel, since here you will find my complete course on video creation using VSTC in Spanish. So, see you at my course. Bye bye.